Now we're going to be talking entertainment, and I have here with me um, a comedian who, I don't know, is it fair to say within a short time has become a national phenomenon? <laughs> Kenny Black. Yes, but. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good to see you, man. How's it going? Yeah, I'm good, boss. I say in a very short time, because to the best of my knowledge, I think it was around 2014, 2015. Yeah. You sort of came into the scene, which is about four or five years, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. When, when, when was it, 2015? Uh, yes, 2015. How did that happen? Um, I started comedy in 2008. Yeah. Uh, went on stage for the first time, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do, because um, I was a musician then, and but comedy has always been part of me. So... I just realized that each time I want to write a song, I write a funny song. So when I when I started doing what I, I started doing what I was doing um, in 2008, then I started getting the balance and balance and going for events, you know, uh, begging for platforms. And in 2000, I think in 2011, I was invited to the Calabar Festival, and I performed, and that was how it started for me. Then in yeah. 2015. I won the award for Up and Coming Comedian of the Year, and that was how I started. And yeah. since then, it's been it's been gone all the way. Yeah, it's been you, you have way. a very unique, very unique um, style. Yeah. Of, of how did that start? Was it the, because you were you were you tried to do music? Was that how the merger happened? Okay. Um, a lot of people thought I started music comedy, but no. Um, I watched the likes of Maliki, um, Julius Agu, MC Basket Man, who is now MC Miracle, uh, because of the love for music. And because of um, the passion for writing funny songs, I decided to, be, to, I decided to do comedy with the music songs. Julius had some funny songs. <laughs> yes. <what> <laughs> so I, I, I decided to write music comedy. I decided to do music comedy. And as I, when I came in, um, there was nobody doing that at that point. So it made it easy for me to, you know, be a better refresher. And I started doing my thing, and you know, everybody started saying, "Ah, this is new. This is this is this is special. This is new. This is not something we see on the regular." So uh, I guess everybody fell in love with the fact that I could turn their favorite songs to something funny, yeah. and they go back home and they keep singing it, and that was how it happened. Man. That's that, it looks like a lot of hard work, though. Yes, a lot. Too. How, how, what sort of process goes into that? You, uh, know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's a difference between writing a song and writing a joke, and there's a big difference between writing a, a musical joke. You know when you first of all get the story. Yeah. After getting the story, you um, look for the punchlines and make sure that it is musical. And as musical as it should be, make sure that it is comical. So it requires a lot of hard work, a lot of listening to the songs, getting the right lyrics, and make sure that it is relatable. So yeah. we thank God for grace. Yeah. How do the artists feel about you using their songs sometimes? Are there people who get offended? Are there people who are really excited? I was scared at, at some point. <laughs> I thought they were going to come for me. Because uh, they said, because I, I was using almost everybody's song, any song that is raining. If your song is raining, if your song is um, the talk of the town, I want. It's definitely your song is everybody's favorite. I want to do something with that song. Because yeah. sometimes you even throw jabs at the artist. <laughs> yeah, I correct them. Yeah. You know, <laughs> sometimes so it's well, So I, I was, I was doing it, and I was like, oh, what, what's going to happen? But I didn't believe that. If it's meant to be, it will happen. Yeah. So they were not coming. Nobody was saying, okay, uh, you, you're using my song. You were, at some point, I would send them a DM. I would send them a message. and like, I want to do this. I want to do it. And when I send it to them, when I send it to them, they like it. Right now, a lot of artists send me their songs. Like, ah, oh, Papa, you've not done anything with my song now. So it, it, it went from me being afraid of using their songs to them asking me to now use their songs. Because yeah. in my own way, I'm also promoting those songs. And... We are friends now. At what point did you know that, okay, this thing is actually going to sell? Like, this market is going to sell with this thing I'm doing? Because, I mean, I know back, like I said, 2014, 2015, when I had seen you a few times at events, yeah. you know, there was always, like, people were always impressed. There was excitement when you came on stage and did this very unique thing. Was there a particular event? Was there something that happened at you knew that, okay, this is going to be my hammer? Uh, you know, <laughs> my, my first audience ever was my standing mirror. So if I can make the person in the mirror laugh, <laughs> then there's nobody. I just believe that. It's so, not risky sometimes. <laughs> it's not risky. I just had this belief that if I can make the person in the mirror laugh, it, it will go a long way. So I started doing it in front of the mirror, and I was amused that I would test the jokes in front of my friends, but they wouldn't know. I would test it in form of a conversation, and it would pick. Then I, I started doing events, and when I was doing normal stand-up, everybody felt like it was a normal thing. But when I started singing, they would be like, oh, this is fresh, this is new. So... Each time I do, from one event to another, it was a standing ovation to standing ovation to standing ovation to standing ovation. And when they started paying me and they said, okay, how much do you charge? 
I said the amount I charge, and they said, we want you to do that music comedy. I said, yes, this is it. <laughs> so this is it. So, so that how was much like, do you charge? Uh, it depends. Well, I'm in charge now, but I don't <laughs> want to charge it. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, want, I want to digress just a little bit now because, okay. you know, comedy is, is big business in the country. There's yeah, a lot of people who are, we have so many icons from the Alibabas down, you know. There's generations of people who have done comedy. How do you think the, the industry is faring? I, I mean, before you came into the industry, I'm sure you, like, you've mentioned the people who you yeah. looked up to and all of that. Yeah. Being in it now, has it changed from what you thought it was? How do you feel about the industry as a whole? Because uh, we hear so many stories about camps yeah. and divisions mm -hmm. and this comedian doesn't like this comedian mm. and these people. Is that true? And you know, because we used to think you guys are very united. Well, we didn't know that there was plenty <laughs> drama inside there. Uh, well, um, the comedy industry, if there is one thing I, I like about the comedy industry and I still like, is that it's a family, it's a family industry. Is it really though? Yeah, because there's... Because I'm know, telling you, we hear those stories. I know you hear those stories, <laughs> but um, there, there is more unity than our mistakes. If a comedian is doing a show today, you might see like 50 comedians coming to support that person for free. You understand? That yeah. is the unity. Um, the, the, the love is there. Though we have, we have, we have, we have all ups and downs. Sometimes we, we argue, we fight. We, but that unity is always there. And when I, when I joined the industry back then, there was no too many platforms. It was just, um, let's say, Night of Britain, Don't Love, AY Live, and a few platforms. But now it has changed. Everybody is giving platforms. And if you're not invited to an event, you can create your own platform and invite yourself to your event and, yeah. and do your thing. So I think it's getting better. We now have different genre of comedy. Because when we started then, it was just, I think it was just stand-up. But now we've got social media comedians. We've got music comedy where I belong. We've got people who do just skits on stage. And the, the, the industry has changed. We've got more comedians right now. More people who, are, who, who, who have um, said to themselves, okay, I'm going to do pure stand-up. Now we have more one-month shows. We have people who can say, okay, I can do comedy for one hour, which shows the strength of a comedian. So it has, it has, it has improved, and it's, and it's improving. Alibaba started the um, Alibaba Spontaneity, shows that comedians are creative and can pick, juice, can pick materials from anything that they see. So it has really, really improved. And where we are going in the next five years, um, other countries will envy us the way we are taking the comedy industry. And look at me, I'm, because that platform has able to give me an opportunity to do my own thing, I'm, now I'm doing music comedy, so I'm doing my own show, I'm doing like a music comedy kind of thing. So it has improved, it has gotten better. I won't say we don't fight, I won't say those things you heard are not true, but we look for a way to settle those things and we don't, yeah. we don't, we are, we are, we are, uni we are, we are peaceful people. What do you think about the, the seniority? Mm. You know, that's also one industry in the entertainment community as a whole that yeah. I know that there's a lot of, no matter how successful you become, there's still that, you know, I mean, the respect is great, but mm. don't you find sometimes that there's almost a sense that people feel like, you know, mm. maybe the guys up there yeah. don't want certain people to come up because there's that, I got here first before you. Is that really what it is or is it just what we think it is? No, it, it's, it's not. For me, it's not. Um, I did a show and Ali Baba was there. He performed. Um, Pony Boon did a show and um, Basket Ma was there. If there's this issue of seniority, I don't want you to go, those things will not happen. Yeah. So um, if I want to do a show today and I call um, I Go Die, it will come through for me based on because of the relationship that we have. And these people, if you look at the basketball show, now you see new comedians. If you see young comedians, if you look at the Bovis, you see young comedians. If you look at Alibaba, you see young comedians. Okay, Bakasi, you see young comedians. So I, I believe that, in, that, that alone is enough to say that these people want to give platforms to be young people. Yeah. I came out from AY Live, I came out from Alibaba January 1st, but I've, I've, I've done shows with Basket Mouth, I've done shows with um, OK Bakasi and everybody. So if there is this seniority kind of thing, I won't be on those platforms. A lot of people will not be on these platforms. And, yeah. and I, feel, I, I feel for now, I feel, I, I'm not sure there's any seniority, there's nobody for me, senior colleague, on, because if there's anybody for me, senior colleague, uh, we won't see them at this event. Yeah. So, do you, think, do you think Nigerian comedians have what it takes to go international? And I, and I say this with all due respect, because, I mean, the talent is undeniable. Yeah. Nigerian comedians are hilarious, yeah. you know, and I have a lot of friends there. And, you know, I'm, I'm always amazed at how they, they kill it on stage. But they, it almost seems not to translate a lot outside, you know. Yes, we do hear about comedy tours in Europe, in America, but it still seems to be done to Nigerian audiences. Mm -hmm. Do you think we have what it takes at this point to cross over? Because there's a belief that a lot of the jokes are told in pidgin in English, that might English, be a problem, yeah. you know. Why don't we have comedians who are able to do a one-hour, two-hour shows, 
when I was on our show constantly mm. in English. Do you in think English. that is, is, is that a myth? <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> it's happening. Um, Basketball just finished the tour with um, Russo Peters. Yeah. And I think that's a big shift for us in the industry. Um, I think one thing about um, us in Nigeria is if I want somebody to start it so we can yeah. follow. We want to make sure that there's an example uh, so that we don't end up um, doing the wrong things. And when, when I saw Basketball doing the Russo Peters, I was like, this is it. Bovi is a man I can compete with, and a lot of international comedians, basket mouth, okay, back at a lot of people. And if you check the industry right now, people are beginning to adapt. You see, because you, obviously we have um, white people attending our shows here in Nigeria, and sometimes we wonder how they how they <laughs> how they understand the pigeon that we say. So we've been able to balance it because if you go English too much, you lose your own fans, your you lose your people. Yeah. You don't you do, and your people are the ones that we that will take you to that next level that you want to. So um, there are comedians right now who are cracking jokes in pure English language. People like SLK, people like Forever. And so at the time I, 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 I performed in America and somebody compared me to, and somebody said, oh, that's, that's, that's Nigerian Jimmy Fox. And because I was able to, exp to use American songs to connect. Yeah. So there are comedians who can study their audience and say that, okay, this is where I am. This is relatable. This is something that can relate to people and do those materials in pure English. And yeah. If, it's, if we have a full hall filled with white people, I'll give you comedians here in Nigeria that can perform one hour, two hours, and the Americans will be like, this is it. Do you think everything should be joked about? Mm, I believe not everything. And Nigerians are strong people. We are very, very strong people. And one of the reasons why I feel that a strong Nigeria can beat depression and um, a lot of things is because, that, is because a lot of things are happening in Nigeria. And instead of crying about those things, we directly use our jokes to pass our message. The time the, there was a monkey thinking <laughs> that this is billion, everything. We all joked about it. Even those that are not comedians. Everybody, Nigerians, what, whatever happens, we first of all joke about it. But in the joke, you see the seriousness. You see the, you see the message in it. So we are, not, we, are not, we, are not, we are not ready for crying. We are not ready for this. Yeah. We just pass our message. Everything that is going on in Nigeria, there is somebody creating a meme, somebody creating a joke out of it, somebody creating a funny caption out of it, indirectly passing our message. Yeah. I ask that because there's people who find that a lot of comedians can be insensitive sometimes, yeah. you know. Um, you do jokes about people who stammer, for example. Mm. I mean, people who stutter, it's, it's a condition, it's not their fault. But you, you find a lot of comedians make jokes about that. Rape is also one yeah. that has become very touchy. Yeah. And a lot of comedians, both the big ones, have gotten in some sort of trouble as well. There was in the documentary on Netflix yeah, you know, that's that featured a lot of Nigerian comedians and the fact that they're very insensitive to rape jokes. You know, what are your thoughts about you know, topics like that? I think um, sometimes when comedians speak a very, very sensitive topic, for example, rape, for example, suicide, for example, um, depression, I feel that the end matters. Um, it doesn't, if you, you need to let the comedian finish because I feel that there is somewhere this comedian is going to. He's trying to use his punchlines, the storyline, to get to, to a point. And comedy has graduated to, to a level where it doesn't just make you laugh, but it educates you. So I feel like if there's anybody saying a joke about rape, saying a joke about this, thing, there, should be, there should be a landmark of you standing against it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So I hear, people, I, I hear people say, ah, comedians should not crack jokes about stammerers because they're beginning to get offended. They need to understand the meaning of joke. It's easy, comedian. He is trying to make jokes out of these things. And well, I understand that sometimes that people can, be, people can be really angry and say that this is, this, this is beyond, this is far from being funny, this is not what comedy used to be. Well, you know, we, we just find a way to balance it. If you're going to crack a joke about something that will be very, very sensitive, balance it and end it in a point where somebody can say, oh, this is where he's going. So, because sometimes we don't let the comedian finish. We don't let them arrive at a would point you, Would you make a joke about rape, for example? Me, I can't make a joke about rape. <laughs> because I, ca I can't make a joke about rape. And, um, because when I, when, I, when I saw the Netflix special, and I saw, I feel that was misinterpreted. Because I think I was at the show, and where he was going was not where, was, was, not, was, not, was not the place that was captured. It, it's, at the end of the day, you cannot justify that. But, but, there was a direction to where it was going. Talking about rape, talking about things that happened. And at the end of the day, in that material, he said no to rape. So we should always let a comedian finish. But for now, um, as, a, as a young person as I am, I will shy away from topics that would go 
viral and come negative to me. Yeah. Like rape, like suicide, like... Um, there are not many things to talk about apart from these sensitive things. There are politicians. Yeah. How do you feel about working <laughs> with politicians? Working with <laughs> politicians is good. At the okay. same time, you... Regardless of, the, uh, of what they stand for, just the money. Yeah, apart from the money, sometimes we... Some, people, some comedians that work with politicians use that avenue to tell them that this is wrong. These are, these are the things that people are saying outside. Because we, we the comedians, are the ones that we, we bring the news to the people in a, in a very, very hilarious way. We're like reciting the news. You understand? So when we meet these, when we meet these politicians um, outside the camera, behind the camera, we tell them this is wrong, this is not good. That's why you see that every, almost every comedian now, they are never shy to tell you, even when, the senator, even when the senator, the governor, the president is there, you tell you to your face that this is wrong. You know that this is wrong. Comically, we let you know that this is wrong. And they adapt. And we've seen a lot, of, a lot of our politician friends who come to us and say, are you sure this is wrong? They say, yeah, this is really wrong. And they adapt. So we need to get close to them so that they can understand that even in our jokes, we're passing our message across. Yeah. Christoph, um, outside of comedy, going back to you now, okay. what, what, what are the sides are there to you? Are you the music part, is this still something that's going to be a thing? Is there yeah. acting in your, your body as well? Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> it's, it's, I'm like a, I'm like a Tyler Perry in a Jimmy Fox um, <laughs> um, packaging. Packaging, exactly. <laughs> a Kevin Apple packaging. So, I, oh, when I'm on stage, I always want to do music, I always want to dance, I always want to act. So, outside of this, I also want to um, give platforms. To a lot of people, I feel like there are so many Kenny Black out there that needs to be given platforms. I feel like there are so many people out there who, who have got something different from music comedy, who have got something new to bring to the table. So maybe one of these is I might just start my own TV show and put yeah. people on and say, come on, man, this is the next big thing. I'm present, which is what I'm doing with my own show right now, give platforms to, com to comedians. And for the music, yes, I should go to music. Maybe I'm a storyteller, so my song is all about stories. So you might not hear me do all this, um, all this shaku shaku and everything, but... <laughs> I, I, I very soon I should drop some singles uh, because I'm still okay. single, so I should drop some singles <laughs> so that um, <laughs> so that things can happen. <laughs> when you say very soon, how soon? Is it something that you plan this year? Or mm, yeah, maybe next year. I, I've got I've got some songs lined up for next year. Um, some storytelling songs. I'm, I will try as much as possible to write a song without comedy because every time I pick up the barrel and I'm and I start writing the song, I write a funny song. You know, <laughs> so it's I try as much as possible to go back to when the uh, comedy was not a big thing and try to write some songs, love songs. Relatable songs, songs about life, basically. What's up with this oxymoron? Why, why the name? And what's <laughs> up with the show? You have a show coming up. Right? Yes, um, like 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 you said, uh, oxymoron is like a bittersweet experience. You know, we get to talk about things that happen. It's like a laugh at my pain kind of thing. Okay. Um, some things that happen to me, some things that happen around, some things that are really painful, but at the end of the day, they are sweet to explain. You understand? You know when you say that? Um, <laughs> when you say that? Okay, let me look for an example. When you say that a monkey, I don't know why I keep going back to that, a monkey stole <laughs> money. The money that is supposed to be used for the government, to the people, is funny. Or a snake swallowed but it's, it. A snake swallowed it. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. And um, or when you say that um, um, somebody is losing weight because um, they are hardworking. <laughs> <laughs> so these are, these are painful things that are comical. <laughs> so these are the things that are, is, this, this is like an ongoing. When you work hard, you are supposed to lose weight. Yeah, you're yeah. supposed to lose weight, you know. But when you, <laughs> no, let me just, let, let's, for security reasons, <laughs> I'm prefer that I need to go home from here, not, <laughs> not Abuja. So it's, this are, this are, this is like an oxymoron. It's a bittersweet yeah. experience, you know. When and is the show? It's, come, it's happening July 28th okay. at a hotel. It's gonna be, you're going to be seeing music, comedy, dance, drama, everything together in one, um, using bitter to explain the sweetness. And it's going to be an amazing experience. Looking forward to that. Please follow him on social media at Kenny Black, right? Yeah, Kenny Black, MCFR, underscore on Instagram. Thanks a lot for being here. Today. Thank you very much, Mr. Ebuka.